Welcome to Weld.com. I want to address a couple of things that people have been asking me this over and over. Uh, a lot of private message, a lot of conversation to people just getting started. They're like, how do you hold the torch? They see me hold the torch down here close in my fingers, especially when I'm tacking up. And, you know, that's not a big deal to me. And I, I know a lot of people that do it too. I don't feel heat when I do that. Now, obviously, when I'm getting the weld and, and I'm making a long run, I don't want to hang on to it down there. So it's like I'm resting the cup, but I'm hanging on to it way back here. And I'll rest the cup on the material and try to slide and be smooth. Now this is in the horizontal position. Technically this is horizontal position. This is flat, vertical up, and overhead. And you know, it all comes down to where are you comfortable and where can you move? <clears throat> I'm gonna do a couple of, you know, I'm gonna do a couple of welds here and then I'm gonna turn this thing vertical up. I'm gonna use the brick back here just to push it against so it doesn't move around. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not feeling all that whippy this morning. I may be shaking a little bit, but, uh, you know, as far as the process, we'll, we'll explain a little bit about heat transfer and the torch angle and introducing the wire. So let me get my hood on, I'll be right back. For the right torch angle, the right arc length, and being able to introduce the wire, this is pretty simple. Okay, and again, I'm hanging on to it back here. I don't think I'd have much fun getting right down here. You know, when we're working up here on edge, you know, there, this is actually a long way away, and I have a lot of good control right up here. But on some of these long welds, they're, they're gonna get hot. So I like to get my hands back away from it. Now, if we turn this and go uphill with it, now <clears throat> there's a couple of things. I'm basically hanging onto the torch the same way. I have to pay attention to where the electrode is being introduced into this joint configuration, which is a fillet weld and I need to be able to progress up this joint. Okay, so I'm resting my forearm on the edge of the table, and that's kind of bad for me sometimes because, man, I get to shaking like an old dog, actually a young dog. In any event, I'm, I'm gonna start out going. We'll see what happens here. The filler wire is gonna be pretty much straight overhead, and I need to be real careful here there's a couple of things about doing this on aluminum. This thing is gonna transfer heat quickly and it's gonna, it's gonna just heat soak up here at the top. And I've seen a lot of people start out making really beautiful welds and they never get off their heat. They get up the top and their weld is real wide, real blown out, real flat. And uh, man, you can back off the amperage a lot and still make the same size weld. So I'm trying to get a good angle for the camera here to be able to see. And uh, you know, actually this is kind of like a free hand because I'm really not holding on to anything. I'm touching back here on my forearm. Let's see how bad or how good I can do this one. Well, there's a couple of classic mistakes. See, I get to show you how to kind of how to do it and how you how to mess up all at the same time. Um, I got up here and my wire kind of dipped and made a ball over here and then it exploded. When I got up here at the top, I really, really had to back off the amperage quite a ways. Um, overall,
We're a little squirrely in profile. Not something I do all the time. If I did it all the time, I'd get a lot better at it. But, you know, the concept of welding aluminum, we always try to position stuff. But there are times you're going to get caught with some kind of position where you're going to have to do this. I, re I used to repair a lot of boats and pontoon boats and people, you know, weird stuff that you'd have to just crawl underneath and get it in here in the shop and you'd be in all kinds of strange positions. So, uh, you know, not, not the best. Again, I'm hanging on to the torch back here toward the back end. It would have been better if I would have had something maybe to put my wrist against or even the ball of my hand right here and be a lot more steady. Not making excuses, but, um, you know, I didn't feel the heat hanging on to it back here. I, I'm, I'm wearing some pretty thin gloves by Iron Cat, goatskin gloves are really, really cool for TIG welding. I didn't feel anything. So again, you know, get comfortable and get in position. Uh, maybe we'll try some of these in the overhead position or uh, we'll, yeah, we'll get somewhere where it's kind of strange that you normally wouldn't be. A lot of bench work you can come out and do pretty good stuff. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching Weld.com.